and to oppose groups that were pushing for parochialism in Uganda and Eurocentrism globally. You know, when we were about to come into government, I went to Europe. And the Europeans asked me, because our old political parties here, the Democratic Party was allied to the Christian Democratic Party of Germany. They were, they were actually getting, being, being supported by the Conrad Adenauer Foundation. The UPC was being supported by the Social Democrats. They have got their group. They are the ones who helped them to build the Uganda House, to start building the Uganda House. Then, then the government built it using the government money. And when we came, some people wanted me to take back the building. I said, no, watch, 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 go here. So, these fellows expected us to side with the European parties, Social Democrats versus Christian Democrats. I said, sorry, I'm not part of that crowd. I'm a person. I start with Africa. I don't start with Europe. I'm not a European. So we refused to join those groups. They had a Christian International, a Socialist International. We have never gone there. Never. And we told our people clearly that our focus is Africa. And here, I'm giving you facts now. I'm not talking about uh, stories here. I'm talking of cement. The list is too long. I couldn't finish it. I didn't talk about maize about bananas, about beef, you, you, you know what is happening. It is Africa that is supporting us and we are also supporting them. Therefore, the NRM was right to distill the principles of patriotism and pan-Africanism and to oppose groups that were pushing for parochialism in Uganda and Eurocentrism globally. After the careful analysis, we realized that our prosperity, first and foremost, needed patriotism, that is love Uganda, and pan-Africanism, love Africa. We access other markets in addition, but let us secure these two levels first. This is why we worked so hard to revive the East African community and to consolidate Comesa. I salute the Waze, Daniel, Daniel Arab Moy, the late Al Hassan Mwinyi, the late, and Benjamin Mukapa, the late, for helping us in this effort. On the Comesa battle, I remember leaders like His Excellency Jean Baptiste Bagaza of Burundi, Dr. Peter Mutarika of, of Malawi. Bax, Bax Nonvete, he was our Secretary General, he was from South Africa, of Comesa, and others. The third principle of the NRM ideology is social economic transformation. Through education for all, Bonaba Somme, and wealth creation for all, Bona Bagagaware by all the families 
joining the money economy and getting out of the pre-capitalist subsistence economy or Korra Echida Chionka. The fourth NRM ideological principle is democracy, real democracy for empowering the people to grow and not cheap popularity that the new colonial agents used to manipulate the people. The correct philosophy, the correct ideology, and the correct strategy of the NRM, mark those three words, my, my friends. The world has got a lot of problems. Africa has got a lot of problems. Because they make mistakes on philosophy, make mistakes on ideology, make mistakes on strategy. Uh, the correct philosophy, ideology, and the strategy of the NRM have enabled the economy and society of Uganda to go through five phases since 1986. These phases are, number one, the minimum economic recovery phase of restoring aspects of the small colonial enclave money economy of the three C's and three T's. Our colonial, our small colonial economy was characterized by the economy of the three C's and the three T's. Three C's was coffee, copper, and cotton. And the three T's were tobacco, tourism, and tea. It was a small economy. But when Amin came, he destroyed it. I, I, didn't, I didn't have time to explain that. So when we came in, we had to restore that, that small island. That's why, we, that's why we are calling it enclave. Because enclave means an island. An island of modernity surrounded by a sea of backwardness. That's the situation we had here in the, in, in the 1960s. And, and that small island was, was, was comprised of the three T's and the three C's. But it, I mean, destroyed it. So when, when we came, we had to bring it back. This is the first phase we call the minimum economic recovery. Two, expanding that enclave with, with the more production of coffee, tea, etc. That small island was producing coffee of two million bags. We are now producing nine million bags. That small island was producing tea of 23 million kilograms before Amin came in. By the time we came, tea production had declined to 3 million kilograms. We are now producing 60 million kilograms of, 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 of tea. So, number one, minimum recovery. Number two, expansion of the small island economy. Number three, the diversification of the enclave economy by commercializing the production of bananas, cassava, milk, fruits, palm oil, cocoa, fish, beef, etc. Because during the time of the British, they would say that coffee was the cash crop. Milk and maize and so on were not cash crops. They were just for, for home consumption. But we said no, all these are cash products. That's why therefore phase three has been diversification. Phase four, adding value to some of these raw materials, such as cotton, fruits, milk, tea, timber, sugar, etc. 
The other day in my speech in Nairobi, I, I was able to castigate the African practice of, of exporting raw materials. This is very, 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 very dangerous for this continent. Here, I have banned the export of unprocessed minerals. If, if a mineral is not fully processed, I don't allow it to be exported. But even the other products, we are struggling to add value to all of them, even coffee. Now, number five, phase five, the knowledge economy through the production of vaccines, the production of automobiles, and so on. So we are now also entering the fifth phase where, where we use the, the science of our young people <coughs> to produce products. These measures have enabled the economy to grow from U.S. dollars 1.5 billion in 1986 to now U.S. dollars 55 billion by the foreign exchange method and U.S. dollars 180 billion by the PPP method, purchasing power parity method. With US, US dollars 1,182 per capita, Uganda now has entered the lower middle income status. We have just entered the, the ground floor of the middle income. Just the, the first floor, we are, we, we are down there now. Mwebalo kuingira ku mugrofe soka. Tumwagala kwe kubira ku munga roba nangi. Apoyo rubanga. 